When you think of the most iconic exotic sports cars of the 1960s, Jaguar certainly is not near the top of that list. Yes, classic Jaguars like the quintessentially beautiful E-Type and the exceptional D-Type Jaguar do come to mind, but compared to cars like the Ferrari 250 GTO and the Lamborghini Miura, the classic Jaguars are really in a different class by themselves. But what if I told you that there was a singular Jaguar that the company developed in the mid-1960s that was without a doubt the craziest car ever developed by the manufacturer? This Jaguar was everything a supercar should be. Elegantly proportioned, mid-engined, naturally aspirated, manual transmission, and it packed a soundtrack on par with that of any famous composer. This car was the Jaguar XJ13. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rare Cars. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the rarest and most iconic vehicles of all time. If you want to see more short-form documentaries on unique cars like the Bill Thomas Cheetah, the Gambala Avalanche, and others, then make sure to subscribe to the Rare Cars YouTube channel, as we will be releasing a new documentary every single week. But now that's out of the way, let's get into the history and specs of the one and only Jaguar XJ13. See, the 1960s were a time for racing, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans was the pinnacle of racing at the time. Ferrari and Porsche were dominating the racing scene at the time, and manufacturers like Ford were developing their first entries to compete at the 24 Hours of Le Mans as well. At the same time, Jaguar wanted to prepare their own entry to compete at Le Mans, and that entry was the Jaguar XJ13. Jaguar began work on the XJ13 in 1964. They started off with an entirely custom chassis for the base of the car, and then install what is without a doubt the most magnificent engine that Jaguar ever built. The XJ13 was fitted with an all-aluminum, dual-overhead cam, 5-liter V12 that pushed out over 550 horsepower and revved to nearly 8,000 RPM. This engine was the real first of its kind for Jaguar, so there were lots of test variations and adjustments made to the engine. The XJ13's V12 was actually two XK6 inline-6 engines that were mated to a common crankshaft. Initially, the XJ13 V12 had six carburetors, but then that was changed over to a mechanical fuel injection system later on. The V12 was mounted in the mid-rear of the car, and the power was put down through a five-speed ZF transaxle. The XJ13 used its own unique suspension design that just happened to borrow many pieces from the E-Type Jaguar as well, likely to save on the engineering time frame for building the XJ13. Now, besides the incredible engine, the most striking feature of the XJ13 was clearly its looks. Its beautifully sculpted aluminum bodywork shows a clear inspiration for the advances in aviation technology at the time. The XJ13 was curvy, slippery, and downright gorgeous. In testing at the Mira test track, the XJ13 was able to clock in a track record top speed of 161 miles an hour. The XJ13 wasn't just fast, it was seriously fast. So fast that it was able to set an unofficial UK lab record that stood for 32 years. Now with stats like that, the XJ13 must have become a dominant force in racing, right? Well, that's actually wrong. Despite its impressive specifications, the XJ13 faced numerous setbacks in its development that eventually led to the project being shelved forever. One of these major setbacks were the rule changes for the prototype class. See, the prototype class was the class that the XJ13 was designed and built to race in. In 1966, it was determined that any vehicle that was to race in the prototype class with an engine over 3 liters in displacement would have to have 50 production versions of that car built for the street. The production cars were essentially the eligibility gateway for companies to not be able to just make crazy race cars that were never based off of road cars at all. By this time, Jaguar had only built a singular XJ13, and at the time the company did not feel that it was right to focus on the XJ13 when the success of their luxury sedans was taking over and taking focus at Jaguar. And furthermore, by the time that Jaguar would have been able to build the XJ13 production run, it would have been already made obsolete by the newer and faster 427 powered Ford GT40s and the brand new and dominant Porsche 917. The XJ13 itself was actually never entered in any major races and only the one prototype was ever built. And tragically, that one prototype car suffered a devastating crash in 1971. See, after the XJ13's disqualification from the prototype class, it essentially laid dormant in a factory for years following its shelving and was only brought out to be used for press. In 1971, the XJ13 was brought out for filming purposes for a press video. After a few test track laps in the XJ13, 
the car experienced a tire puncture on one of the apexes of the turn, causing the car to slam into a retaining wall and flip over not once, but twice. The driver, Norman Dewis, was fined, but the car suffered substantial damage. The XJ13 was then hauled away and sat for another year dormant until the chairman of Jaguar commissioned the vehicle to be restored and repaired to its former glory as a memento to Jaguar's engineering and design prowess. This nut and bolt restoration was finished in 1973. In the decades since the creation, crash, and restoration, the one and only Jaguar XJ13 has been cared for by its owners and is sometimes able to be seen in exclusive car events. Currently, the Jaguar Heritage Trust has been tasked with keeping the one and only XJ13 alive and well so it could be enjoyed by enthusiasts like you and I alike. Its legacy lives on as a testament to Jaguar's engineering and design expertise, and a reminder of a time when the boundaries of automotive performance were being pushed to their limits. And there you have it. That is the history of the Jaguar XJ13. A legendary, yet relatively unknown Jaguar supercar that could have changed the racing scene forever. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure you subscribe to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash the notification bell for more documentary-style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.